yeah, I would like to welcome you to our daily um, um, webinar. Today we want to speak about micro and mini uh, future trading. Um, what's a um, very important topic since uh, last year, we have a few new contracts um, in micro and mini um, futures. And we want to give you an overview about um, everything, what is important and maybe also what is uh, the benefit um, in terms of other products. So let's get started. This is just the normal disclaimer that this is not an investment advice or any trading recommendation. And um, yeah, my name is Christian Walter and um, I will guide you today to this uh, webinar and give you all the um, important um, topics regarding um, mini and micro future trading. So um, there are three uh, main assets or three um, classes. We have like uh, indices, uh, micro e-mini, um, especially for um, S&P. For Nasdaq, Russell, and Dow Jones. So these are um, four um, new micro e minis, and uh, for future trading or for sorry for um, currencies, um, um, we have this uh, um, Euro Forex and British Pound Japanese uh, Yen. Um, these are all new products what the CME um, published uh, last year, and we will see that. Um, quite a big success for them because in terms of volume and everything, it was a good start, um, especially if you see it in the um, e-minis uh, for S&P and NASDAQ and also for um, Euro in the um, Forex uh, futures. And metals as well, uh, we have uh, gold, silver, palladium uh, lately and also the um, oil um, um, future. So these are the train, three main um, classes uh, and uh, hopefully in the future we will have um, much more. Um, in total there are 14 new micro contracts uh, from three different asset classes, uh, what you see on top. It's equities or let's say indices, um, forex and um, commodities or metals, um, but there's also oil included. So it's uh, very good, especially for smaller um, portfolios uh, for diversification. And uh, now I want to give you an overview what um, are the main facts. Um, especially after launching it, um, the first eight months uh, um, um, from the last year, they said like um, there's a good uh, volume and just a few numbers what might be not so important, but 26% uh, of the volume came um, from outside the US. So still the US is uh, giving the um, biggest volume, um, but it was like accepted uh, everywhere in the world. We had 160 countries, um, what the, um, the CME told us, and the average daily volume was uh, nearly with 100,000 contracts per day. So um, this is a quite big success. And I think the best um, was the E-mini contract for the S&P 500. But we will go a little bit deeper in all these details in the next slides. Here you can see um, the total volume. I mean, this was a cumulative uh, volume. But as you can see, what I already um, told you in the beginning, um, the biggest volume was here on the MES as a symbol. This is the micro E mini S&P 500. What is uh, this in total volume? And the second is the NASDAQ. So these are the main um, micro E minis um, for in terms of daily volume. It's also very important if you want to trade these that these are liquid products with a really high volume. So here's um, the uh, WTI, um, crude oil, um, also with the open interest and the average daily volume. It's also quite high. These are numbers from the end of January, what we got from the CME. So just to see that uh, also for uh, metals or commodities, um, there's a good volume and a good open interest. You see the same for silver and for gold. I mean, silver comparing to gold and oil is uh, in terms of um, volume not so high, um, but in general, I think um, also with the big um, future contract, um, it's uh, actually the same. Um, gold is always um, um, bigger in terms of volume and then silver. Um, this is also the same here with the mini or micro futures. 
Here's um, another chart for uh, in terms of volume and open interest <clears throat> for um, Forex um, of mini futures. Um, it's pretty much the same. It was a good um, volume coming in. And here you have the total numbers for these three assets, what we showed you in the beginning. It's also like, just to give you the information uh, in terms of volume, um, there's nothing to worry about. You will get like really um, a good spread. You have like, um, will get like um, yeah, your orders filled uh, with almost um, every big size as well. Um, this is the only thing what um, these numbers will um, show you just to see like the average daily volume in S&P. Um, Forex is of course a little bit um, less and um, gold and um, oil is also very good in average daily uh, volume in contracts. This is all um, total contracts. So I think the first slides uh, made it pretty clear um, that you don't have to worry about uh, anything in volume and uh, you can see uh, the biggest um, volume uh, mini and micro futures for this three asset classes here. And if you want to see or have these uh, slides and the numbers, uh, we are happy to share it. And we can actually provide this uh, um, to you as well. You just have to send us an email and uh, we are happy, happy to forward this presentation to you. And I will also have uh, later some more information which I want to share with the um, Trader Workstation or Trade Station. So we will also create some some good um, um, workspaces for you if you want to use this. Um, we are also happy to share this. Um, the only thing um, what is also available now, um, what was not there when this presentation by the CME uh, was provided, is the micro future contract for Palladium. Um, but at the moment, you're also able to trade this now. Um, so for this, we don't have any numbers here included, um, just to give you this information as well. And I think this slide is uh, important um, to see also um, everything related um, bid ask, related to the spread, related to the quantity, and um, we choose the three um, yeah, big, biggest um, um, contracts in terms of volume what is like the uh, micro e-mini S&P 500, we have the micro euro, uh, euro USD future and the, um, the WTI for crude um, oil future, what uh, will be shown here with the um, bid and ask. So you see it's really a tight spread what we have here, quantity on both sides, uh, bid and ask is also um, very good um, for these three um, contracts and this is actually a big big benefit that you know there's a good um, um, size, there's a good volume and there's a very tight spread what of course will help you for the execution and um, that your order will be filled to a quite a good price at the end because this is the most important thing. So I think this makes it pretty um, um, obvious uh, what was like um, told um, about um, volume, about um, the liquidity, about the spread, what's like the, the basics uh, before you want to invest. But now let's, uh, let's go to the benefits um, related to ETFs. Uh, because um, what is the main reason for um, traders in the past why they, they didn't choose uh, futures? It's a high margin um, what you need normally, um, especially if we talk about the S&P 500. Uh, if you want to trade the big contract, normally smaller accounts will never think about um, trading this uh, because um, yeah, it's, um, um, it's always a high margin. Um, related to open orders uh, for this and um, regarding the micro and mini um, futures uh, will be this the solution to make it even available for smaller portfolios and um, now let's compare especially these uh, contracts what are now available in micro and uh, mini futures um, comparing to ETFs because there are a few things what will show you that's um, quite interesting to maybe think about um, in terms of trading ETFs, um, to think about uh, 
doing the same with uh, the micro or mini futures. Very important is the management fee. Um, I mean, in the end, this is always the same. Um, if we talk about CFDs, if we talk about um, any other stuff, what will be like um, um, created by by a broker or by a bank, there's always a management fee. Every ETF is having um, um, in his structure a management fee. So um, if you like a short-term um, trader, maybe you want to do day trades, then this might be not so important for you. But for every buy and hold strategy um, where you buy um, any um, contract or uh, ETF, it's important to know that there's always a management fee for the ETF. Um, it's an exchange-traded fund. And as the name is uh, giving you already the explanation, there's uh, always a management fee because this ETF is created by um, um, by a bank, by a um, financial institute like BlackRock or iShares, um, for example. So, of course, there should be um, a fee. Otherwise, um, yeah, there should be a payment uh, for the one who is creating this um, exchange-traded fund. So, it's very important to notice, especially if you hold this position um, longer than a few days. And uh, this is a big, big benefit for um, futures. So let's say you want to participate um, in gold, what was like um, doing quite well in the last um, couple of weeks. Or if you think oil will be come back to um, some higher prices in the next uh, months, then I <clears throat> would say it's easier. And uh, in terms of the cost structure, uh, maybe better to do it with the micro or mini futures than choosing any ETF. Um, it's the... Um, it's a fair price. Um, also, in terms of margin, um, you will have um, less margin um, comparing to the ETFs, for example, if you want to purchase it. And okay, this tax advantages uh, we can maybe just um, erase this because this is normally for U.S. citizens. We know every country, especially we in the European Union, is having different um, tax. Um, agreements or te tax uh, declaration so what we seen here from the cme was just the information for us citizens it's not related to anyone outside the us so this is something what you have to check with your tax service if there's a difference in your country between um yeah tax advantages comparing to etfs or micro or mini futures um the second, if you say this is the first big benefit about the management fee, the second uh, very important uh, thing what you need to know is the trading hours. Because trading hours uh, ETFs, let's say it's a US ETF, what might be maybe even more difficult for European union citizens to trade it, you are restricted to the trading hours uh, of the US, US exchange where the ETF is listed. And it's pretty much the same all European ETFs, you're always restricted to the trading hours um, of the exchange where the ETF is listed. So for futures it's different because you can almost, let's say almost um, trade it around the clock. Um, so it's a very big benefit that um, you're not restricted to trading hours, especially if you see something moving in um, gold, oil, and the market uh, in the US or in Europe is already closed or not opened yet. Um, it's easier to uh, do this with the future because um, you have like a good volume, um, let's say normally around um, all trading hours. Another um, important thing, it's maybe not so um, important if you want to trade on a long term um, um, buy and hold strategy, but if you want to do it like um, in, a, um, in a day trading um, um, environment or strategy, um, this mini and micro um, futures are not um, included in the pattern day trading rule. And, you know, with uh, stocks, ETFs, um, you are always restricted to the pattern day trading rule. And that's what brings us back at the end uh, at the account size, uh, because I think smaller accounts are always um, having issues to trade like uh, intraday um, or doing pattern day trade uh, trades. So with the futures, you are able to do this. And uh, um, this, I think, it's also a very, very big um, benefit. So these are the three main things. Of course, margin is another thing. We can um, highlight this as number four. And I think this makes it pretty clear um, um, what 
is the benefit um, and what is, uh, let's say, advantage and disadvantage if we just see these um, facts here on the slide, uh, futures they have um, um, in all these um, things, yeah, advantages comparing to ETFs. And yeah, when will you choose the ETF? Of course, uh, when you want to trade something what is not available as a micro or mini future, because if you want to participate, for example, in an indice, uh, indice of uh, Germany and of the DAX or some other um, European countries, these are not available as micro or mini futures, then maybe there's no other choice to um, look for the right ETF. But if you come to gold, silver, um, NASDAQ, S&P, or like um, the, the euro itself as a currency, um, I would say um, check the micro and mini futures uh, before you decide um, which um, asset you want to trade. So here's another um, slide what um, will show some uh, more information in um, volume, also comparing to um, volume in some ETFs, um, that the volume is um, yeah much um, higher in futures than in ETFs. What will also help you to get a better um, execution on your order, spreads are tighter. I mean, this is the thing what I showed you already in the first slides. Uh, here's just like, um, something comparing from um, ETFs to um, futures. And I think the most um, well-known ETFs are written here. It's uh, Triple Q or United States Oil Fund. These are all the symbols for the um, ETF comparing to the future. And here you will have um, daily average daily volume also compared. So you can see um, the only thing um, where the future is not much or where the volume of the future is only double what the ETF is um, having is um, here in the S&P 500. There's only twice, a little bit more than twice the average daily volume, but in all the rest, you will see the volume is uh, minimum uh, 10 times higher than what we have here in ETFs. So uh, I think, this slide makes um, it pretty clear um, that in terms of volume, you will always have the benefit on the micro and mini future size comparing to um, the ETF. Um, another thing, and I think this is also something what you um, might at the beginning maybe um, need to know. Here are all the symbols. We speak about the indices, uh, S&P 500, NASDAQ, uh, Russell 2000 and Dow Jones. These are the symbols to get the right um, micro or mini future contract. Then you have to choose um, just the expiration, June, September, and so on, or December. Um, it's the same like with all the future contracts um, on the um, bigger perspective as well. And um, a very important fact, what will also help you, um, I think, in taking a decision what to trade, is um, the initial margin requirement where you can see it's uh, um, quite low. It's also, I think, something what you have to think about it, especially um, if you want to decide, should I trade um, ETFs or should I trade um, futures? Here is um, how much is one um, index point in terms of um, um, dollar. You will see this actually as soon as you get this symbol in your TWS or on your trade station. So this is just an overview of every important um, fact related to the micro e-mini contracts. Also with the trading hours, uh, what we mentioned earlier, that is um, also another advantage comparing to um, ETFs itself. And the same um, slide we also have for um, the micro metals and um, energy market. We spoke about gold, silver, and crude oil. You will have here the, um, sorry, you will see here, let's go back. You will see here the ticker symbol. You will see the um, margin and also how much in terms of dollar um, amount is uh, one index point. Um, and also you can see the tradings, trading hours. So these are for all three asset classes, all the information what are necessary to um, get started 
And I think the main thing, what you should remember, um, are the um, symbols to find the right mini and micro future contracts for trading. And um, also, of course, like I said, the initial margin requirement, what we spoke about it earlier. For currencies, we have the same overview. You see here as well, the ticker symbols, the contract uh, unit, and um, everything uh, related to initial margin and trading hours uh, as well. I think trading hours are actually almost the same in all different um, classes here. So this is um, yeah potential tax um, advantage. Like I said, this is something what we have to skip because it's related to the U.S. citizens. Uh, CME is just providing this because as we had this slide earlier in this presentation, mainly the, most of the volume is still coming from U.S. citizens. So it's a very important topic that they can even save tax um, um, and they trade these uh, micro and mini futures comparing to the ETFs. But for us, as I said, it's not so important and um, we will just go um, a little bit deeper how you can use these um, micro and minis and what are the benefits to maybe your um, normal future trading because uh, it's not only um, um, important to know this if you want to start trading futures and in the past you thought it's uh, it's a little bit too high for me in terms of margin um, and it should should not be only for like um, smaller portfolios. Even if you're a normal future future um, trader and you're used to have the the bigger contracts, the normal future contracts, it's still worth worth it to think about um, trading with uh, minis or micro um, because you can um, scale it. I mean, in terms of uh, trading one a big contract, you can um, do also ten smaller contracts where you get maybe a better execution and uh, where you can also go in step by step to have a, um, a better diversification um, for your portfolio. And here are some topics what might be interesting um, for um, any future trader um, to also um, have a look in the my minis and micros, for example. Yeah, this is what I said in terms of scaling. If you want to trade like one or two big contracts, uh, it's worth to think about maybe 10 or 20 micro contracts um, um, because you should get um, a better price. And as we saw on the volume, um, it makes sense to um, even um, try to scale this a little bit with the micro or mini futures. That's exactly the point what I tried to explain you earlier. And um, here you just see an example um, where a trader executed 10 micros instead of one of the big contracts, um, and especially if it's going down, yeah. It should be um, um, easier to get a better um, execution price um, for um, 10 um, lots in terms of one lot. And what is also very important uh, if you are doing something like this is it's called spreading with micros and the margin. Uh, so let's say you buy, um, for example, um, one S&P 500 um, contract and you sell two contracts of the uh, Russell or of the Dow Jones or everything else. So you're, you're, you're using um, um, like spread bet, not spread betting, but spreading means like you invested maybe long on the one hand side on uh, one indice and um, with the double size on the other um, um, future contract for another indice and it's very important that this will be um, calculated in a, in, in a package let's say um, for the margin and here are some um, important information for this um, how it will go um, these are just some examples how you can outperform the s p 500 um, with um, spreading um, but i want to go to the next slide what makes it um, maybe a little bit more clear uh, what I want to show you here. So, for example, um, you are selling two contracts of um, the Russell 2000 
and you're buying one contract of uh, S&P 500. So you can see um, these are the margin requirements. So normally if you do this two trades and you just um, add both margins together, you will have a, um, a margin or you need to have a margin of 1,300 um, in total. Also related, related to the margin numbers, please um, keep in mind, this presentation was uh, done before COVID-19, so it might be a little bit different because some brokers, or especially in the future uh, markets, um, they should maybe increase the margin, but the idea, the example will work exactly in the same way. So instead of having this 1,300 um, cross margin, there's a margin offset of 80%. So what does it mean? Um, uh, you just need a total margin of $260 instead of uh, having this um, $1,300 um, margin. So this is also a very important uh, thing for everyone who's like um, doing spreading with uh, different micros on indices, for example. What will work with this four different classes, NASDAQ, um, now Jones, um, then we had Russell 2000 and the S&P 500. Yeah, some um, points related to the um, next topics, what we have to the next um, um, webinars. Uh, we have option trading and um, how to create a trading plan. Um, all these events you will find on our, um, on our website, so where you can register or even on the TradeStation calendar. Um, just let me give you a short overview that you know how to find it. If you go to our website to um, TradeStation support, you should um, find all these um, next times here, um, 28th of May to 4th of June, and you can just agree, um, subscribe for the next days here and the dates as well. And related to um, this micro future, uh, micro and mean future trading, you can see an example here um, where I include the um, next expiration dates in new June for the um, E-mini S&P 500, E-mini NASDAQ 100, uh, Russell 2000 and the Dow Jones. And if you want to know to, um, how to subscribe to the right data, just right click on it and go to launch market data subscription manager where it will show you uh, which data you should um, choose. And I think especially the first three means NASDAQ, um, Russell 2000 and um, S&P 500 are all included in the same um, in the same data package. And to give you an example, we can open here the um, Metal for gold um, is pretty much the same launch market data subscription manager. And um, why is it important? You can, of course, if you have the permission, also trade on delayed data. But uh, always keep in mind, if you want to use the TradeStation and uh, all the benefits of the TradeStation platform, um, it's always important that you can only use it with um, live market data. And that's why I want to show you here. You can choose also for minis on micro futures level one and level two. And for the metals, for example, uh, if we go to level one, it's normally all included in the COMEX real time. Um, what is uh, $1.25 um, per month? And if you want to have the level two, it's uh, $6 per month to have the uh, full market debt if you um, yeah, would like to see the full overview. And last thing to show you this also for um, the indices, the mini for S&P and um, NASDAQ, what we discussed earlier, you will also find here a quote bundle, um, but if you just want to have, um, also keep in mind for the quote bundle, if you apply to US futures value bundle, it's always coming automatically with the US security snapshot and uh, future value bundle. So um, yeah, 
Even you can uh, avoid this fee if you generate a, a commission of $30 per month. Um, I would suggest if you don't need the whole bundle, just always check for check for the um, the level one. What's only one dollar twenty five per month? Um, where you have S and P five hundred, Future, Nasdaq, and um, the uh, Russell two thousand. So these are the market data fees, um, and uh, like I showed you earlier, all the rest we uh, would be happy to share some workspaces uh, with these uh, mini future contracts. You should be also able to download this from the TradeStation website in the future. And if there's any information uh, what uh, was maybe missing in my presentation, um, feel free to contact us uh, via email or via phone. I will show you all the details. And if you watch this on YouTube, please, on the right-hand side, on the bottom, you find this subs. Um, um, encryption button um, and to not um, yeah miss anything of our next um, webinars um, you should subscribe to this um, channel so that you have all the information for the future um, thanks for your attention here are my email um, website and uh, phone number and uh, I hope to welcome you were on, on one of our upcoming webinars and all the other information you should also find here on YouTube or on our website. Have a nice day and talk to you soon. Diese Konferenz wird nun aufgezeichnet.